The Sports Scouting Report with Lee Brickeen. Brought to you by Medines Collision Center in Baton Rouge. Take control, choose Medines. Gross Savant Lodge, south of Lake Charles, the true sportsman's paradise. Treads and Care Company in Central, the tires you need, the service you want. Harvey Auto in Shreveport, Bossier City, the name you have trusted for years. And Gage in Baton Rouge, get better connected with Gage. Here's your host, Lieber King. Hi, I'm Lee Burkeen with the Sports Scouting Report podcast. We've got a great show today. JT Curtis joins us, a legendary coach, Hall of Fame coach with John Curtis High School. and Also, his son, Jeff Curtis, who's been on the staff for many years, played college ball. Uh, we're also going to talk to Jeff about baseball at John Curtis High School. But this is a show that you need four hours, but we only have 25 minutes without commercials, coach. <laughs> JT, thank you for it's, being here. Lee, it's good to be here. It really is. Uh, like that tie. Purple, thank you. Purple. Thank you. My purple. granddaughter gave that to me. She, she, they keep me in style, as they say. There you uh, go. Other one. Yeah. Uh, I want to brag on you a little bit about your times. 1969, first year uh, coach at John Curtis High School. Not many coaches coaching since '69 no, high school football. No, no, they're all either dead or are trying to push that way. So I've been very fortunate and, uh, and they've had a, a wonderful experience doing this and being with the kids and their families and watching them grow to be men and their children to uh, come by and to play for me has been a real, uh, real joy in my life. Coach JT has, has combined 32 state championships between baseball as a head coach and football, 27 in football. Uh, five in baseball. A lot of people don't know that you were a baseball coach at your school. Yeah, I, lo I loved baseball. I loved coaching it. Uh, you know, it, 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 first of all, you played a lot, you yeah. know, and, yeah. and the weather was great. And get out and, and be able to watch kids continue to improve. And baseball was a lot of fun. And, and what you learned in a hurry was that the, the guy on the mound controlled a lot. And yeah. uh, baseball was one of those sports that – you can't call plays. You don't have reverses. You don't have hidden tricks. Yeah. Either you throw it over the plate or you hit it. And one of those two things are going to give you an opportunity to win. But I, I really enjoyed coaching baseball. But as when my dad passed, it, it got to be a, it just got to be too much uh, yeah. as I got to uh, be more involved in the administration of school. Yeah. You know, what's really amazing is if you go back to memory lane with coach, East Jefferson High School, yeah. you played football. Uh, same school as the late Mike Miley and yeah. a lot of great players. Um, Coach, you were an All-American lineman. Yeah. People don't know that prop probably yeah. about you. Yeah, you know, it, it's amazing, too. Uh, my high school coach was a, a man named Bob Whitman who coached at Tulane and then took the job at East Jefferson when it was a young school. And he was such a positive influence in all of our lives, not only my life, but in, in all of our lives. And uh, he was a fine Christian man and a, and a great family man, and uh, it was a, it was a big influence not only for me personally, uh, but as a football coach because he was a fundamentalist, and I had a great experience at East Jefferson. And you're right, I, I was a, a lineman that nobody would recruit today. They would, <laughs> they would all say, "You mean he doesn't play running back?" What you did know? you weigh? Just curiosity. Uh, about I was that. probably about two ten. Which 212, now is like yeah. 270. Well, yeah, smaller. right. Now they would say, mm, I'm yeah. afraid not. Pass. Tight end, maybe. Yeah, Bulk up. Maybe. Bulk up, maybe. Uh, and then you go to Arkansas. You're a player at Arkansas. Yeah. yeah. And that was a great experience. You know, uh, Coach Broyles, I, it, as I look back on it, was so far ahead of his time. Uh, he was one of the first guys that had two offensive line coaches. Uh, in that day, that was kind of unheard yeah, of. The, yeah. the second offensive line coach, believe it or not, was Barry Switzer. Wow. Uh, and, 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 of course, I got to know Coach Switzer when, when I was there. And that was a great experience uh, because he was a guy that had off-season program, uh, had a, a, a pretty sophisticated uh, weightlifting program. So it, it was really, a, again, a, a major influence in how I implemented those things in our program when I went to John Curtis. That's a heck of a staff. Barry Switzer being on the staff as an assistant. Yeah, Barry was the assistant. 
and uh, left, went to Oklahoma uh, as an offensive line coach and uh, with a guy named Jim McKenzie. Real quick story. McKenzie takes the job. He passes with a heart attack. I think it was about two years after they got there. They elevated Chuck Fairbanks to the head coach. Fairbanks is there two years, takes the job with the New England Patriots. Barry Switzer becomes the head coach at the University of Oklahoma in about a four-year period. I know guys that have worked their whole life for that opportunity, but uh, Switzer got it in four, four and a half years, and the rest of that's history. You know, dominated for a while. Dominated. Time. Just was a, a, uh, an awesome recruiter and obviously a very good football coach. Nick Saban before Nick Saban. Yeah, yeah. You couldn't win a battle on recruiting against Barry back in the 80s. It was all, unless you're Osborne, maybe, right? Well, you know, he was one of day. those guys. And again, he was a pioneer. He introduced uh, the black athlete into that community. The first, the first black athlete uh, in the Southwest Conference at that time was a young man named Jerry Levias at SMU. Okay. And, and uh, Hayden Fry was a coach. And then I think when Coach Switzer went to Oklahoma, he recognized the skill and the talent that was not in that conference and uh, brought it to the Big 12. And uh, as, you, as you have stated, they dominated in that wishbone offense for years and years and years. And, and he was a real pioneer in that. And like you, always had a great linebacker like Bosworth. Well, always had a great Mike linebacker. He did. He did. And, uh, you know, Barry, though he was a free spirit, he, he was still a strong disciplinarian in what he demanded in terms of effort and energy. So guys like Bosworth fit into him. He, yeah. he could tolerate the haircuts yeah. and, the, yeah. and, the, and the different styles. That, yeah. yeah. He, yeah. He, but when the, when the ball was snapped, yeah. Uh, everything was down to business, and, and Coach Switzer was uh, uh, was very demanding on the field. But he had that loosey goosey kind of business off the field. That's why him and Dupree didn't they kind of clash. I though. think that's right. Um, and of course, you and I are aging ourselves on this pretty right. good now. But that's right. That's how they clash. No question. We're gonna take a break. We'll come back. We're gonna have more with J.T. Curtis from John Curtis High School. You're watching the Sports Scouting Report podcast. We'll be right back. Listen, whatever you're driving right now, Tommy Harvey wants it. Bring it in to Harvey Subaru, Lexus of Shreveport, Bossier City, or John Harvey Toyota. They're paying big bucks for all trades right now. They'll cut you a check right there. Tell them Lee sent you. What does that bug man do? Not only do we do pest control, we do odor control, bat removal, moisture control, rodents, and of course, Bed bug control. Give the bug man a call. We get them before they get you. Welcome back. Lee Burkeen with the Sports Scouting Report podcast. We've got JT Curtis with us, head coach, John Curtis High School. And I know coach does not follow this. I know Jeff Curtis is here. He's going to be with us later on. But it's six wins away from the all-time winning record ever of a high school coach, the most wins at one school and any school or overall in a career. Yeah, that's what they tell me. Yeah, that's what it's coming to. And and you, Lee, I honestly I don't pay any attention to it. You right. know, I learned a long time ago. Right. It's uh, it's not about wins and losses. Yeah. You know, I, I, I made this statement uh, the other day to a group of people. I said, if the only thing that we gain out of athletics, and I mean generally across the board, is wins and losses, it it really isn't worth it. Yeah. The the money, the energy, the effort, the time away all the sacrifices you make, there's got to be intrinsic values that you instill in young people that are going to carry over to their life uh, that give you a inner joy, an inner peace that you feel like you're making a contribution to, to young people's lives. And, and that's what makes coaching exciting. And, and I think that's the reason I've done it for as long as I have. I, I, I still enjoy watching these young men grow and develop and, and become dads and, and become great citizens. And yeah. uh, from that perspective, uh, I don't worry about wins and losses. Well, Coach, you're what's good about the sport because we need more coaches like you that develop, enjoy it, love the game. And, and, and I mean, you, you're one of the best ever. Oh, I, mean, I appreciate it. And I've talked to a lot of former Curtis players that live in Baton Rouge, that live all over. I'm about to name some of my favorite John Curtis players. Now, no, I'm not talking about talent-wise, just guys that I watched and, and watched play for you. But 
the late Joe McKnight. I got like a dirty dozen. Reggie Dupard, Mike Stonebreaker going in the Hall of Fame. Yeah. You mentioned College Hall of Fame. Jonathan Wells, love the big back. Jonathan Wells at Ohio State. Danny Wimpron, great quarterback for you. Tony Bua had a great career at Arkansas. Um, Clarence LeBlanc, probably the best DB to play at LSU from Curtis, your school. Kenny Young, great player at UCLA. And then I felt Duke Riley, tough as they come, as you know, coach, coaching. Greg Dubrock, Stephen Clark, a name people might have tied in, went to Texas, and Darren Mulroy. Mm -hmm. So those are the guys that I remember. Well, that's a pretty good list. Yeah. We, you could win a bunch of games with those guys. I'm going to tell you, coaching them would be really easy. A lot easy. of linebackers. Yeah, yeah the there, there were a lot of good linebackers. And uh, that's an awfully good group. You know, when you see guys like Greg Dubrock, who's, who played at LSU and obviously has lived here in the community, <laughs> married a, he married his high school sweetheart from John Curtis. And, you know, what a contribution he's made to this community as, 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 a, as a citizen. Uh, and, and again, uh, the Dubrock family, all his brothers played for us and what a, what a great group of people. And, and, and that's what makes coaching really rewarding. You've, you know, Leon Curtis, your D coordinator, linebackers coach has been with you since 1972. Yeah. Has put over 50 linebackers in college ball yeah. and whoever played for him has learned everything, but how much has Leon meant to you? You, you know, his intensity and his stability and his consistency are what mark him to be the kind of football coach that everybody ought to want to be. Uh, he is a guy that is not really interested in the limelight. He, when he sees a camera, he runs the other way. And, and, and it's because that's not why he's there. Co and he's a coach. He's, he's a, he is a pure coach. He, yeah. He loves doing what he does, and he loves the teaching process. Uh, he's a he's a math genius. Uh, he's a guy that you know. I I tell people, the geometry made no sense to me, and to him it was like ABC. Uh, and and so I think all of that analytical uh, mind of his fits into the game of football, and and how he teaches and how he coordinates things. Uh, to get the to get the result that we're be, they've been able to get. Great staff, uh, family members all over yeah. the staff. Yeah, it's been really interesting. Uh, we don't turn over a lot, uh, but when we do, we've been able to replace them. Steve Curtis, Leon's uh, youngest son, is on the staff. Coaches outside linebackers. Matt Curtis coaches wide receivers. Tommy Fabacher, LSU, uh, walk on free safety who. Uh, made an impact here at LSU, uh, coaches our secondary. Uh, of course, you mentioned a Jeff who coaches our running backs, and, and he, he's, he calls the plays now. He kind of took the headset away from me, so he, okay. he's, he's calling the plays and doing a great job doing that. So it, it's a good group. Uh, Jerry Godfrey played for us, and John Curtis played at Tulane, was an all-conference player on their undefeated uh, uh, 98 team, I think it was, and so it, it's a bunch of guys that understand the process and are committed uh, to our school. And, and Lee, I, I know a lot of people talk about the family atmosphere, but that's what my father and my mother, that's what they wanted. They wanted people to be a part of who we were. And I think that comes from the Christian influence in their life, that we're all part of God's family. And... Uh, and, and that's been an emphasis that we've had at our school since its beginning. You know, and I, every time I watch a Curtis game over the years, you can tell the teaching because you never really ever see a flag hurling. I mean, if there's a flag thrown, it might be one a game or none, but the discipline of your well, teams. Well, we, we try to emphasize that. You know, so many times when you lose a game, you go back and look and, and you've lost it because you beat yourself, not yeah. because of what yeah. they did, because yeah. of what you didn't do. And and part of that is the discipline and, and, and learning how to keep yourself under control. And look, it's a very emotional game. And, yeah. and, and sometimes it's, it's not as easy to control, uh, but that's what we try to teach. Charlie McClendon, coach, uh, I was thinking about this last night when I was watching basketball and I wasn't interested in the basketball games I was watching, but I was, I was like, J.T. Curtis dealt with Charlie McClendon for nine years. That's right. You started in 69 and Charlie Mack finished in 80. 
and you what was he like at LSU's coach back? You were one of the few high school coaches still coaching now. That you know, I, he, in the I, again, you go back to a guy like Coach McClendon, and I think he might be the most unappreciated coach that, that is that coached at LSU, if you want to call it the modern era, because all he did was win games and 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 win a lot of games. And and he was uh, he again was a real fundamentalist. He was a guy that uh, when when you lined up, you knew you were going to be in for sixty minutes of hard fought football. Uh, and 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 I think again, uh, he was a little unappreciated by the LSU people. And as time went on, uh, you recognize that record was pretty pretty good. If it wasn't for Paul Bear Bryant, he'd have won probably several championships. Yeah. Exactly, and that was the big rub that he, yeah. you know, he didn't beat Alabama, yeah. and yeah. and uh, you know, so what? Who? A yeah. lot of folks didn't, right, right? But he won a lot of football games for LSU. Very impressive. From '75 to 2019, your teams have had at least one kid make all state, oh. uh, which is a heck of a, a run. And the, the the second closest state championship team in this in Louisiana is Haynesville with 17. Um, Alton Red Franklin. Great guy. What a good football now coach Red was. Yeah, I had the opportunity to work with Red in the high school all-star games and, and play against his team. If you never played in Haynesville, it's an experience. Yeah. It's an experience and uh, played there in uh, the 77 season. And uh, Red was, a, was a, a great football coach, Hall of Famer in our state, and certainly deserved so. We're going to take a break. When we come back, I want to get your thoughts, Coach, on the transfer portal what it's doing to high school football and kids getting scholarships and uh, NIL. So we'll talk about that when we come back. Grosavon Lodge, the true sportsman's paradise. Grosavon Lodge has fresh and saltwater fishing, alligator hunting, waterfowl hunting, and echo tours located south of Lake Charles, Louisiana. Give them a call at 337-598-2357. That number to call again is 337-598-2357. 2357 and have the time of your life. Listen, whatever you're driving right now, Tommy Harvey wants it. Bring it in to Harvey Subaru, Lexus of Shreveport, Bossier City, or John Harvey Toyota. They're paying big bucks for all trades right now. They'll cut you a check right there. Tell them Lee sent you. Welcome back. Lee Burkeen hosts the Sports Scouting Report podcast with JT Curtis, John Curtis High School. Coach the Portal. Um, in my opinion, is out of control. Um, there's no stop signs. There's no red lights, green lights. Uh, a lot of kids are not getting scholarships now. It's cut back about 60%. Yep. I've counted that kids are not getting. Even if you go to a junior college now, they're not getting scholarships. Right. What's your thoughts on where we are with this portal at college football? I think it's easy to sum up. If, if we don't get it under control and if we don't find some measures that are going to make people to stop and take a pause, we're going to destroy college football as we know it today. I'm completely against the way it's been implemented. I think the lack of thinking through the process is what bothers me as much as anything. As stringent as the NCAA has been in the past, all of a sudden they open this gate with no restraints, with no guideline, no directions. And, and, and I think that it's something that uh, the, the people in higher places than you and I are going to have to come to a realization we're going to lose college football as we know it today if we don't get it under control. You're hiring college coaches, and they, 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 this is not on their resume, to, to babysit 12 months on, on another item. Yes. And then you got Portal again in spring. They're opening it back up in the spring. When you think the roster's set, they're opening it back up, Coach, in, in May. It'll go from, I think it's uh, April the 1st to May the 1st or something in that time frame, right after spring ball. They allow people to bolt after spring ball. And, uh, it, it again, it's something that we're going to have to get under control, in my opinion. 31 years, coaches on TV in New Orleans. I don't know how he does it, but on Friday nights, he's like Houdini. He comes in the studio with Ed Daniels. Coaches a game, and he's there for the, the Friday night show, the recap. You know, what happened is that we were getting shut out in New Orleans, basically, because of pro football and pro sports, pro basketball. So we started the show in 91, and the first 
uh, three months of the show, we rated the top show in that time slot. And it was because of this. People want to see their children. Yeah. They want to see them have an opportunity to be exposed. And we're going into season 32, and it's been an absolutely wonderful experience. Tell everybody how they can watch it, obviously. WGNO uh, every Friday night from 11 to 12 on uh, 38. And then it replays at 12 to 1 on uh, GNO from uh, 12 to 1. And uh, it's, again, highly rated and highly watched. And it's an exciting uh, one hour of high school football. JT Curtis and Ed Daniels. They do a great job. Coach, they thank do. you for joining hey, thank us. thank you. Enjoyed being We're here. We're going to have Jeff come up and uh, talk some baseball. Great. And I know I want to ask him one question right off is, Beloso is at LSU from Curtis, Cade. One of you guys, yep, and uh, got one in the minor leagues. I know playing from Curtis, and a uh, lot does a great job. You won five state championships in baseball, and Jeff's done a great job. We're gonna bring him on. Thank you, you, Coach. Thank you. Thank you. We'll be right back. What does that bug man do? Not only do we do pest control, we do odor control, bat removal, moisture control, rodents, and of course, bed bug control. Give the bug man a call. We get them before they get you. Listen, whatever you're driving right now, Tommy Harvey wants it. Bring it in to Harvey Subaru, Lexus of Shreveport, Bossier City, or John Harvey Toyota. They're paying big bucks for all trades right now. They'll cut you a check right there. Tell them Lee sent you. Welcome back. Lee Burkeen, your host of the Sports Scout Report podcast. That was JT Curtis. Incredible human being. One of the best ever. He's never going to say that. I, I am. He's uh, incredible for the state, incredible for the game of football. And I agree with Coach, we got to get this portal under control. But we're going to turn our attention to baseball. I am a baseball fan, believe it or not. I love baseball. And I've been to a lot of baseball games. I attended a lot of Ben McDonald games at LSU. Todd Walker, Russ Johnson during that era. I kept up with Tulane when he had Coach Jones. And we have Jeff Curtis with us, who's not only – offensive coordinator at John Curtis and JT's son, but also the head baseball coach. Jeff, thank you for joining us. Thank you. Thank you for having us. Thank you for having me. Your dad won five baseball state titles. You won a few. Yeah. Uh, and and you love baseball. Obviously, you coach with football and you manage the, the yeah, two. Yeah, man, manage the two. You know, everybody always asks me, you know, which one do you like more? I guess it's about 51% to 49% <laughs> football, but... Yeah, I, I, I love the sport. I love the game. Um, I, I, I enjoy coaching. I enjoy playing it as a player. You know, so many kids nowadays um, are put under the pressure of having to pick a sport or, you know, focus on something. And, and uh, man, I, I sure would have been disappointed if somebody would have made me pick a sport when I was in high school. Being able to play both sports was just a tremendous benefit for me um, as a young man, um, not just as an athlete or as a player, but also as a young man. Uh, a lot of LSU fans want me to ask you this, and y'all have had kids go to Tulane, LSU, Nickel State, all over in baseball, but Cade Beloso. Yeah. Hopefully no injuries this year. Hopefully, He was yeah. on his way last year, but a former Curtis graduate. Yep. What do you think of Cade? Cade's fantastic. Uh, I mean, he's one of the best players I've ever had the opportunity to coach um, or, or even be around. Just a fantastic young man. I think he was primed for a breakout season last year. Unfortunately, had the, uh, the, the knee injury. Um, you know, I think he's back a hundred percent. Uh, but you know, I talked to him not too long ago and, and, uh, he said, coach, whatever happens, I'm good with, um, you know, he's a tremendous teammate. He's going to uh, support his teammates, support his team. Um, I think when he gets his opportunity, he's going to produce, uh, and, and if his opportunities, uh, are, are less than what they want, you're not going to see him pout or mope or complain. Um, he wants to get to Omaha and he was wants to have an opportunity to be part of a world series. Uh, team and and that's just who who he is you know people don't understand that uh, that are outside of new orleans the baseball talent that's come out of the city of new orleans is incredible you look at the late mike molly uh he he was on his way to being a great one with the angels uh daniel cabrera went to curtis he's in the major leagues with lsu will clark uh rusty staub that's an old one yeah uh probably before uh you were born, probably, but you, you know who Rusty is. Oh, absolutely. I mean, yeah. Some great players come absolutely. out of New Orleans. Yeah, New Orleans is a, is a tremendous baseball town. There's a lot of talent, not just in the New Orleans area, but in the surrounding areas. When yeah. you talk about the North Shore or, you know, in the Hammond area, you know, some of yeah. the outskirts, uh, just to, and even in the Baton Rouge, obviously, it's just a tremendous area for baseball. 
What do you like about baseball where we are with high school baseball right now, Jeff, with Louisiana high school baseball? I like the direction it's moving in. You know, we've we've gotten away from the single game and the one and dones. You've moved into the playoff systems where it's a best two out of three. Um, I think you're seeing um, th the best teams um, that are able to compete for a state title at the end and not maybe just the team that has the best player. Yeah. Uh, you know, back in, in, in the old days, you could have one pitcher – that can kind of get you almost all the way to the state championship or make a good run at it, and they might not have been the best team. So I think we're moving in the right direction um, with what we're doing with some of the rules that we have in the, the state. The Hammond venue is a pretty good venue. It's close to a lot of the areas in the state. And no, I'd rather, you know, Sulphur was good at one time. But uh, congratulations, and I wanted to ask you this on purpose, but happy for your dad getting that 2022 state championship in football yeah absolutely no it was a it was a blast we had a great year you know we had a couple a couple of down moments but we rallied together and uh we finished uh what what we thought was possible and you know had a huge win over baton rouge catholic up here in the semifinals and was able to beat brother martin in the state championship and really really proud of that team the way that it came together and and dad did a tremendous job of of, of rallying everybody and, and gelling together really? in the end and y'all won it in the NF, NFC North division yeah. with Edna Carr, yeah. Jesuit, Brother Martin Rommel, Holy Cross, going on and on and on, yeah. um, St. Aug. Uh, Jeff, what's the, what's the feedback on baseball coming up? I think we got an opportunity to be good, a good team. You know, we got a good group back, coming back off of last year's runner-up team who lost to Baton Rouge, Baton Rouge Catholic in the state championship. We got a good group back. They've been working hard. Yesterday was our day one first practice. We had a good practice yesterday, so – we're really looking forward to this season and hopefully making another run at a state title. You were a shortstop when you played? Yeah. Yep. Uh, who, who does pitching coaching? Who's uh, Malcolm Ogeron, who actually was okay. a high school teammate of mine who pitched okay. at Nichols. Um, he came back a few years ago um, with us and has done a tremendous job with our pitching staff. And, and a lot of people don't know, that, baseball people know this, but what I find fascinating is to find a guy that can throw four pitches in high school, right? No, Very if, rare. If you can throw three for strikes, you got a really good chance of winning, especially if you can throw the change up, which we yeah. believe is the best pitch in baseball. You don't want to face anybody with three. No, no. If you got if you're facing somebody that's got three for strikes, you better be able to scratch a run or two across the plate, or you're going to be on the wrong end of it. I got to ask you this before we go, Jeff. Who is the best, most talented baseball player you've ever been around? Uh, as a coach? Uh, Kay Beloso and Daniel Cabrera, okay. talent-wise. Um, we got a young man that's a senior this year, Michael O'Brien, who's super talented as well. He's going to go play at Mississippi State. Um, and his his uh, his job's not done yet. Um, you know, Cade was able to win a state championship his senior year. Daniel won a state championship his junior year or sophomore year. Um, so, you know, those two guys, um, tremendously talented, great teammates, great, great, great men. Promote high school baseball. They're not nine-inning games. They're usually earlier in the day. They're at different times. Tell everybody how they can come support John Curtis baseball. Yeah, uh, you know, the, we play in the Catholic League. You know, Jesuit, Holy Cross, Brother Martin, Rummel, St. Aug, this year Edna Carr. Um, you know, those games, every, every game anybody can win. Tremendous environments. Stands are always crowded and packed. Um, you know, we'll be uh, starting up district uh, in March and go through the end of April and then playoffs come and then may the best team win. Support high school baseball, support high school football, all sports, swimming, whatever it is, track and field, love them all. And let's get that portal fixed let's, so we can have more high school signees. Uh, like Coach JT said, it, it'll ruin the sport if they don't go in and redo the rules and the way it's set up. It's not working the way it's set up. Uh, Jeff, thanks for joining us. Thanks for Thank having me. Thank you for being here with your dad, JT. Appreciate every everybody at John Curtis High School, and we'll see everybody on Friday. Thanks for listening to the Sports Scouting Report podcast with Lee Brookings.